I'm Michael Lanfield, an animal rights activist, author, and motivational speaker. I've been vegan since 2009, ever since this spiritual awakening. In 2011, I had another awakening, bearing witness with Toronto Pig Safe, and I would like to tell you my story. It started in spring 2011 when I had a chance to see pigs up close. Toronto Pig Safe bears witness of pigs transported and slaughtered at a place called Quality Meat Packers. I've never been to a slaughterhouse and this prompted me to want to join them. I never thought such a place could exist in a big city. I always thought slaughterhouses were somewhere far off in rural areas as our factory farms. I decided to join Toronto Pig Safe in bearing witness. It was true. What I saw I'll never forget. A grassroots animal rights group, Anita Krein, started Toronto Pig Safe in December 2010. In 2011, they started to do, as they call it, bearing witness of the animals transported and slaughtered. Activists hold signs and hand leaflets raising awareness of the treatment to the animals. They now hold regular weekly vigils at the slaughterhouse in a place called Pig Island, where transport trucks take the pigs en route to the death camp. As a vegan, I never realized what went on in such place. I've seen undercover footage of slaughterhouses and factory farms, but seeing the pigs up close was something different. One day, as I stood on Pig Island, I saw the first truck carrying pigs destined for the slaughterhouse. As the truck got closer, I felt a lump in my throat. The truck was in front of me, and looking out from the ventilation holes was something I will never forget. Many faces peering at me, drooling, foam, cramped so tightly, some standing on each other, dehydrated, and their bodies covered in scratches and bruises. At that moment, I was totally shocked at what I saw. Even though it was just a few moments before the truck would start moving again, it was the most heartbreaking moment of my life. As I was capturing their faces on camera, something caught my attention. It was one pig in particular. I could see her loneliness, the suffering, and the sadness in her eyes. Something at that moment changed my life forever. The pain she was feeling was the pain I was also feeling. It was pain I've never felt before. I lowered my arms with the camera, tears rushing down my face. I felt extremely frustrated, angry, and sore at the same time. I felt useless, like one person or one group, like Toronto Pig Safe, could not do anything to save these animals. Right then, I turned cold, crying as the chill of the tears rolled down my cheeks. As I moved closer to the truck, wanting to touch the pig, there was this unbearable smell. I think it was ammonia that came from the truck that got me gagging, gasping for air. I then backed away from the truck, not believing what I had witnessed. It was an experience I'll never forget. A few moments later, the truck quickly whirled away, turning, making its way to the death camp. I now realized what my purpose was, and I made a promise to the pigs that I would dedicate my life to spreading the vegan message. I have to save these animals, I told friends. They need me. I've made a promise to do whatever I can to save them. Since the humbling beginnings of my journey with Toronto Pig Save, my will to save these animals has become ever so stronger. I now stand proud as a vegan, not shy of anything. I continue learning about the health benefits of vegan and raw vegan diets. I continue learning and researching farming practices and ethical and spiritual veganism. When I better myself, I better the animals and all of creation, I told friends. These animals do not have a voice. We don't know precisely what they're thinking of when they're being trucked off to the slaughterhouse. I do believe, though, that the animals know that their life is coming to an end. When they arrive at the slaughterhouse, I can hear their screams of terror and pain as they struggle trying to free themselves. It's like no sound I've ever heard. Because morally, I feel it is unjust to do this to innocent beings. I feel it's my duty to do whatever I can to help them. We need to free them in order to free ourselves. We will never be free as long as we oppress others. Just like Anita Krines and all the dedicated volunteers working with Toronto Pig Safe, our mission is to create total peace and heaven on earth. I think we will achieve this, but social progress is slow. While Anita does amazing work on behalf of animals, she is alone just as I am. With billions upon billions of dollars invested in the interest of just making profit, the animal exploiters only care about the status quo of their vested interests. 
I really do believe though that one day we will awaken and start feeling empathy for the animals on a massive scale. Everyone is a morally decent human being and we have to be patient with each and every one of them. As Leo Tolstoy once said, as long as we have slaughterhouses, we will have battlefields. If it wasn't for people like Anita Kreins and the rest of the dedicated activists, I wouldn't be where I am today. I have to thank all of them for giving me courage and hope for a better future and a better tomorrow. I now have a deeper connection and understanding of the suffering of the animals and the suffering it causes to us all. Witnessing such abuse to the animals prompts me to dedicate my life to the cause. Leo Tolstoy was right when he said, as long as we have slaughterhouses, we will have battlefields. Creating peace on earth cannot take place when we are confining and killing animals. As an intelligent society, we have to ask ourselves, do we really want to be free? What kind of planet do we want to leave our children and future generations? Do we want to create a place of violence or peace? Do we want to create a place of abundance for everyone? Do we want to live in a world of clean water, clean food, and clean air? Do we really want to end wars and world hunger? If the answer is yes, the only logical solution is to adopt a vegan lifestyle for the planet, humans, and the animals. In time, we must see a massive change if we want to survive on this planet. As Will Tuttle, PhD, the author of The World Peace Diet, says, I don't think it is far off. I think it's inevitable that we will wake up, that this violence towards animals which boomerangs as violence, disease, and a sense of apathy and as low self-esteem in people and basically the enslavement in many ways of humans would completely change. We will prevail. Love will conquer hate and empathy will conquer apathy as peace will abolish wars. It is inevitable that I think in our time, animals and humans will be free and the days of eating animals will be over. We will go back to our roots as we did some thousands of years ago when we lived more harmoniously with the earth and each other. It has to in order for us to be truly free. The way of the world with so much hate and violence continuing on such paths will eventually lead to genocide. Ever since the herding revolution of 8 to 10,000 years ago, we have caused more animal and plant extinction than in the previous 65 million years combined. Since that time, wise men such as Pythagoras, Leonardo da Vinci, Cesar Chavez, Mahatma Gandhi, and Albert Schweitzer all understood these concepts, yet their teachings have been erroneously covered up over the decades because of our cultural programming. Volunteering with animal rights activist Laura Lee and Compassion for Animals to becoming vegan in spring of 2009 and witnessing pig transport trucks and slaughterhouses in 2011, my journey has taken many roads spiritually by bearing witness to these animals. After connecting to the animals through their screams and witnessing them bound for slaughter, I can no longer say that I didn't know. Knowing now what I know, I can be a voice for them. Being in the company of other dedicated activists also reassures that I'll dedicate my life to them. For the past 26 years, I hadn't bothered connecting their suffering to the food on my plate. It is activists like Anita Kreins and others who make this world a better place to live in. As intelligent human beings, our purpose is to care for one another with love, kindness, and understanding. We must put others in front of ourselves. As Mahatma Gandhi once said, I must reduce myself to zero and put myself last amongst my fellow creatures. And that is what I myself must do.